Good morning. Welcome to Stand on the Word. Thanks so much for joining me this morning. Today, two uh, relatively short chapters. We're looking at Joshua chapters 11 and 12. We uh, Again, we have a, a resource available for the book of Joshua. It's a digital study guide. If you're interested in finding out more about that, simply text the word Joshua to 67742. That's Joshua to 67742. Too. Also, if you want to introduce someone to this two-year journey through the Bible to join you, they simply need to text the word Bible to 67742, and they'll get a link to all the resources, the, the reading guide, uh, and other things that we have available for this journey. And I do hope you're being blessed by this journey through the Bible, that you're finding encouragement and strength and hope, because that's what the Word of God is. It is our life. It, especially in these days in which we're living, of, of such great uncertainty, both here in our, in our nation, as I sit here in our nation's capital. I mean, these are tumultuous times, and then we look globally at what is happening. The Bible, the Word of God, which is living, is it's the antidote to anxiety. It, it provides us strength. It provides us insight, understanding, and peace and joy, even in the midst of troubling times. And I'm excited because I believe we are, we are seeing and we are going to see the power of God manifested in this world, uh, even in our nation. And this is what we see as we read the Old Testament. We see God at work. And while this is the history of the nation of Israel, it is also the character of God. And it, we see the principles of how God works and what He expects for those that walk in relationship with Him. So, as I've said many times, the Old Testament speaks to the physical, where the New Testament speaks to the spiritual. But these, we take these principles of the Old Testament and they apply to us in the spiritual. And, and so, uh, I encourage you to be looking and asking each time you open the Word of God, asking the Holy Spirit to teach you, because that's why He's here. The Lord sent Him to teach us, to lead us into all understanding of the truth and how we might apply these principles of Scripture to our lives each and every day. All right, let's begin. Uh, well, let me quote verse 6 of chapter 11. It says this, But the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid because of them, for tomorrow about this time I will deliver all of them slain before Israel. You shall hamstring their horses and burn their chariots with fire. So in chapter 11, what we have here is the conquest of the northern city-states of Canaan, the Promised Land. And then in chapter 12, there's a summary of the victories under Moses on the east side of the Jordan, and then the victories under Joshua's leadership over both the southern and the northern regions of the Promised Land. So in the Battle of Gibeon, which we looked at last time, God orchestrated the defeat of the kings of the southern part of the land. So he was taking it piece by piece. As we mentioned last time, going into Jericho was a strategic move because it divided the promised land in half. It's, it's right there in the middle. So Gibeon was one of the, the greatest cities of the, the region. And when they essentially surrendered under the false pretenses of that treaty, the five kings of the south decided to attack Gibeon. And as we read last time, the Lord gave Joshua and the children of Israel a miraculous and decisive victory. Well, here in chapter 11, we see an even greater confederacy of kings in the north coming against Israel, and they are defeated. It's very interesting as you read through Scripture every time uh, these kings get the idea of coming against Israel. They end up being defeated. Um, Israel is not, in these cases, they're moving in, but it's the kings of the land coming against them, and they are defeated. Verse 1 of chapter 11, And it came to pass when Jabin, king of Hazor, heard these things, that is what happened in the southern part, that he sent to Jobab, king of Madon, to the king of Shemron, to the king of Ashaf, and the kings who were from the north in the mountains, in the plain of plain south of Chinnereth, in the lowland, and in the heights of Dor on the west, 
to the Canaanites in the east and in the west, the Amorites, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Jebusite in the mountain, and the Hivite below Hermon in the land of Mizpah. So that's a pretty extensive confederation here, pulling all these different city-states together. So, verse 4, so they went out, they and all their armies with them, as many people as the sand that is on the seashore in multitude, with very many horses and chariots. So it's a, relatively speaking, a very big army. And when all these kings had met together, they came and camped together at the waters of Muram to fight against Israel. But, verse 6, the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid because of them, for tomorrow about this time I will deliver all of them slain before Israel. You shall hamstring their horses and burn their chariots with fire. Let me take that last sentence first. You shall hamstring their horses and burn their chariots with fire. This is an instruction we see over and over, and, and, and we've seen before where they were instructed when they would have a king not to go back to Egypt and get horses. And w the psalmist said, you know, some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. And so this is to keep them dependent upon the Lord. And that's one thing we need to understand that, you know, the world, we, we are never going to have everything that the world has. It, it's just not going to happen. But that's so we will trust in the Lord. And as we see, these victories belong to the Lord. There's no question that he brought them about. And he wanted that to remain, their dependency upon God. And quite frankly, I'd rather have victory than have all of the tools that the world thinks leads to victory. I'd rather lean upon God and allow Him to bring about these victories, which is exactly what He did here. And as long as the children of Israel trusted in Him, that's what He did for them. Now, I want to go um, back to these other words, because the, the armies of the north were forming this uh, massive coalition to come against Israel. All right, And this is a relatively new army. Yes, they had a few successes under their belts, but it was, uh, it was building. The, the, the challenges and the opposition were getting larger with each successive campaign that uh, Joshua was engaged in. And that's, that's really how our lives spiritually go. We, the Lord brings us into a, to a challenge, to a situation, and He, he brings us through. We, we see victory. And then we end up with another challenge. It's actually a little bit bigger, and then a little bit bigger. That's just the way it is. God is preparing us. As David, when he took on Goliath, he made reference to the, the lion and the bear. The Lord is preparing us. And as we go through these experiences of trusting him and we see the victories that he brings, the challenges get greater. They really do. The opposition more intense. I can speak to that from personal experience. But that, that's good because the victories are even more significant because only God can bring them about. So the Lord speaks to Joshua as he faces what looks like our overwhelming odds. He says, do not be afraid. Now, this is a phrase that we see often in Scripture. In fact, anytime God is about to move in a major way, he says, do not be afraid. Why? Because actually fear is our default position as human beings. Since the fall of man, Fear has often gripped us. You look back in Genesis when Adam and Eve sinned against God. When they ate the forbidden fruit, what did they do? They hid themselves from God. Why? Because they were afraid. Now, a number of years ago, I did a study on the word fear in the Bible, which actually led me to writing a book entitled No Fear. Now, the word it appears a lot. In scripture. In fact, it appears in Scripture more often than the word faith. But again, this is our default position because of sin. Sin brings fear. Sin robs us of our confidence and our faith in God. That's why the Lord calls us to repent, to repent of our sins and to walk in obedience with Him so that, that really the, 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 the grip of sin is broken on our lives, which means the guilt but still, our human nature, our default, is to fear. And, and the way we overcome that is to trust in God. Our faith will overcome our fear, but our fear will often cancel out our, our faith. 
And so that's why we have to abide in Christ. It's essential to abide in Christ, to have the power of God to produce the fruit of God in our lives. And that's why Bible studies like this, being in the Word of God each and every day, abiding in Christ, His Word, His Word is living. It is how the Lord speaks to us. So it's so important that we're spending time in prayer and in study, walking in fellowship with God, if we are to experience the faith that we need to experience the power of God that's essential to overcome the challenges that are before us. All right, verse 7, So Joshua and all the people of war with him came against them suddenly by the waters of Merom, and they attacked them. All right, now we don't know all the details of this attack, but we read Joshua came against them suddenly. Now this was a very common tactic that Joshua used. So we assumed he probably marched his men uh, through the night a good distance in surprised them, came upon them when they were not prepared. Verse 8, And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Israel, who defeated them and chased them to greater Sidon, to the brook of Merithoth, and to the valley of Mizpah eastward. They attacked them until they left none of them remaining. Now don't miss this. How did they win? The Lord delivered them into the hand of Israel. The opposition to what God has promised you and me as followers of Jesus Christ, that opposition is intense, it's, there are many, and it's powerful. But as we obey God, we need not fear them. As we revere and obey God, we don't have to fear because we are fighting under His authority for His purposes, and then He fights for us. And remember, we're in a spiritual battle, it's not a physical battle. And that's something we need to be reminded of because as we fight, we fight for the purpose of freeing those who are held captive by the enemy of our soul, and that is Satan. And, and, and we're seeing greater and greater manifestations of that evil. The, the principalities, the powers, the rulers of darkness at this age, the spiritual host of wickedness in heavenly places that Paul writes about in Ephesians 6, it's becoming so evident. And we need to be remindful. We see uh, these things unfolding of, of these agendas that are being pushed in our schools, uh, how children are being uh, led down this path of denying God's creative power in their lives, this is locking them into a path of spiritual destruction. And so we need to understand what is going on, and we need to be operating in the power of God. This is His battle. He fights for us, and, and, and we need to be walking in concert with Him. All right, in uh, chapter 12, it provides a list of the kings that were destroyed. It's actually most of the promised land, but there were, however, pockets left unconquered, which after Joshua's death became a problem uh, for the children of Israel because they did not totally remove the inhabitants of the land. We'll read about that in the days ahead. By the way, archaeologists over the last hundred plus years have uncovered great layers of ash on a number of these uh, cities that Joshua destroyed by fire that we read about here. And the dating of this is back to around the 1400 BC, which was the time of Joshua. And uh, the archaeologists have found beneath that layer uh, of ash, pottery, and evidence of the Canaanite culture. And above that layer of ash, evidence of the uh, Israelite culture. So with each passing day, more and more the truth of God is revealed. You can count on it. Trust me. Father, thank you for your word. And, and oh Lord, we know that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, may we not walk in fear. And I know that the forces of darkness are marshalling, and we see, Lord, the intensity of that in this cancel culture in which we live. But Lord, we need not fear. Uh, Lord, as we walk in obedience to you, in reverence of you, Lord, as we seek to bring glory not to our name, but to you, to bring glory to the Father, Lord, may we see your power in this day, just as Joshua did in his day, Lord, as we, as we engage in these spiritual battles. So thank you for your word. May we be encouraged today by it. And I just pray for all of those that are on this journey. May you encourage them and strengthen them. And Lord, may they, as they trust you, and as they step out in faith, see the victories in their lives. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
All right, thanks for being with me this morning. And until next time, keep standing on the word.